Catherine, your husband Stephen is also a physicist. Yes, he is. So how has that been, having two careers? And did you meet before you had permanent positions? Oh, yes, we absolutely did. Um, we met in week naught of my undergraduate oh. career at Cambridge. Um, so I think if we had dwelt on the difficulties of navigating an academic career, um, that would have been pretty daunting. Um, but we didn't dwell on that. We chose to take things step by step. We had various ground rules, like each other's career was more important than our own. Mm -hmm. um, and we also agreed that we weren't going to live apart, which has been just as well given how much travelling I do mm. in the context of my project. But we weren't going to live in different cities or different countries. Um, but we were going to take life step by step and, and see what happened. And so you, you both did PhDs in Cambridge? That's right. And That's then right. you came here to Oxford? Well, in fact, Steve, um, Steve was a year ahead of me in finishing his PhD. He got a junior research fellowship here in Oxford. And the year that I was writing up, um, I was sort of shuttling backwards and forwards. You were living here? I was living here, but going back to Cambridge when I needed to, oh to get the thesis finished. Okay. And at the time, I didn't have a job. Steve did, so we had bread on the table at night, which was wonderful. Um, but I gave myself 12 months in the wilderness to decide, can I get a job in the same city as my husband, or shall I go off and do one of the many other interesting careers that there are? Yeah. So you did, you did give yourself a time limit and said, if I don't get it, I might leave science and do something different. That's right. It was intended to balance, on the one hand, the need to give it a bit of time to try it out, um, but on the other hand, if the doors didn't open, then to say, OK, let's move on and do something different. And I mentioned earlier about the parable of the talents. It really is important to me that we use the talents that we have. Mm -hmm. And so just staying at home, twiddling my thumbs, waiting for a job to come to me was not something I was willing to consider. Yeah. And so then you got the JRF at Billy Hall. Mm -hmm. um, but even then you weren't, you still didn't have a permanent, you both had JRFs, presumably, yeah. Yeah. but neither of you had permanent jobs. Yeah. So that must have been quite stressful when the JRS were finishing and you started looking for the next step. And I don't remember those times as being characterised by stress because I don't think we ever said our careers are the most important things in our lives. Mm -hmm. If those things are on the altar, as it were, then they take an appropriate importance. Mm -hmm. And viewed within the wider perspective of... Um, being married to someone I like a lot yeah. and um, being in a position of lots of opportunities. I was privileged to be well educated, for example. Um, it didn't, I didn't fix on the must get a job in academia, my security rests on that. That was never the case for me. So it didn't particularly feel stressful because I wouldn't let it be that important. Mm. Because other things were more important. Absolutely. Like your marriage. Absolutely. And what else would be more important? My Christian faith is way more important to me than my career. Mm. I mean, your work won't ever love you back, of course. Mm. Yeah, so that's, um, that's really... Because I think for a lot of the academics, particularly dual career academics, it's a very stressful... They, they experience it as very stressful. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that there aren't real and valid stresses that, that come for all sorts of different reasons yeah. at all sorts of different times. But I think in any walk of life, if you, if you just look at it in a very blinkered way, if you don't have a broader perspective, if you don't have hinterland yeah. in which you let your mind switch off and wander and enjoy different things, music or literature or walking in the hills or whatever it might be, going for a good sail, I think if you, if you never do those things, if you never enjoy doing those things, you can allow academia to be really quite dehumanising. Mm. Neither you nor I, nor any other academic, is a brain on two legs. Mm. We have hearts and minds which are designed to enjoy and explore mm. this wonderful universe, and particularly this planet. And so, if I'm hearing you right, part of what you're saying is, you both navigated this two-body problem, but a very important part of it was that you did try to have a holistic life and, and not take the academic career as the most important thing. Absolutely.